private talk. I'll give it a few seconds if someone wants to do that. And, and I'm interested in talking about erotic capital. And the way women have to perform their own sexuality. We can have two running topics. And in relationship to Lindsay's running topic. that women are often performing their sexuality in work made by men. Tangent topic is furthermore about uh, this idea of labor and exhaustion and how much we spend performing our labor and the exhaustion that comes with it. And and how this is related to labor and needing to support ourselves at the same time. Can we take a vote on uh, discussing one thing or are we enjoying this mishmash? Doesn't everyone perform their sexuality? <laughs> <laughs> And isn't it also exhausting? <laughs> I find sex working to be an empowering feminist act that is also art. And in a way, and in a way, cracking, cracking, cracking at the framework of patriarchy. money and is a huge part of this economy. Not particularly sex work, per se. Like makeup. I think people think sex work is empowering because within our society, Women don't get paid for their other values, so in that field of work, they're able to make a larger income. If there were other options, they would not exploit themselves. Maybe, but it is also an empowering act to take back a part of your being that has been subverted by patriarchy such as your sexuality. Makeup and other accessories that are predominantly female are not necessarily female because they are not only used and consumed by females. Would sex work be as empowering if you were not being paid? Yes. <laughs> Why? Has anyone ever had sex? <laughs> I'm not sure. 
sure we can attach erotic capital to consumer goods. So what would it mean for uh, another position like a cashier or a waitress where even your uniform can sometimes exploit your sexuality? For example. <laughs> for example, in my job, I wear a very long black dress that's very sexual with a pink French made bow. Apron? Apron. With the top that is supposed to reflect a nipple. And all I'm doing is selling cookies. <laughs> <laughs> and does that make you feel empowered? Selling cookies is not the same as sex. Work. <laughs> However, you're also wearing cut-off jeans that are so short you can see your butt. There's a choice in that. There's a difference. Many people don't have choices or options. and unfortunately have to make a large amount of money in a short period of time. And women can do that the fastest. Yep. Yeah. I think choice is key, but it, men can also make a lot of money doing sex work. You have a choice to work at the cookie store. There are many types of sex work and many types of, it's a very broad category of type work and it's different depending on who is doing what and where. And your internal experience of what is happening. So if we're going to argue about it, we should narrow it down. But men will probably never have the choice to work, to be sexualized at the cookie shop. They wear nice suits, and from earlier we didn't get a chance to say it. Performing this, I'm performing this character whenever I'm there. The employer is controlling my options, they're not my own choices. But isn't that our fault too? This was in regards to men being sexualized, or not sexualized, so it could be. In studying the sheets over there, it, we are all educated people. Many of us are educated people of a particular status. Um, I think that sexualization comes up in performance when it's most obvious, and sometimes uh, desexualization can also be a commodity, as in the first cutting hand dance company. Yes. What? As in the Merce Cunningham Dance Company. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Within Merce Cunningham, they are attempting to take away the differentiation between many of the men and women's bodies. <laughs> <laughs> and in doing that as well, there is a removal of the signifiers of the sexualization of the body. And that's in order to turn the art into something that is seen as more conceptual. Men and women are clearly defined in the first mm -hmm. Cunningham dance company. <laughs> Are they binding women's breasts and covering up their hips and covering up the men's penis? 
In no. some cultures, especially <laughs> in India, the phallus is a strong symbol in temples and Shiva exposed everywhere. Let us remember that we are talking about Western culture. Amen. <laughs> In most countries, sex is a fact. In America, it's an obsession. True. I'm confused. Please elaborate when you say when you say sex is a fact. It was a quote that I saw in this movie about women porn stars who are getting paid the most money right now. The movie's called A Rat. But I do understand the quote to mean that we're really, really hung up on sex and sexuality. And we definitely treat women badly, we treat women like sex objects uh, because of that as a culture. Ten years ago I saw a performance art piece where people were dressed up in skin tight gold unitards and the point was to remove their sexuality, with it, their sexual identity, but in turn it ended up becoming a highly sexualized act. And the performance was also very sexual with the, with the audience. Coincidentally, unintentionally. In response to the sex being an obsession in America, and also as in many other countries, including Japanese and Thai. Even when you cover your breasts and your genitals and everything, it's still about sexuality. I think we're mixing up sexuality and gender. How can you tell sexuality by someone's outfit? I think we should address uh, the connections between all this overt sexuality and how you do it in your hate and blood. I think you should repeat it <laughs> after the train is gone. <laughs> and we also lost erotic and for the sake of non-English speakers. <laughs> uh, I I think we need to think more, or to discuss more about um, sexism, patriarchy, and sexism in patriarchy, and the objectification of women and money. Uh, creating and maintaining erotic capital is a job. Self-objectification self is a duty now. This is a quote by Laura Pen Penny. Laurie Penny. Uh, and is completely divorced from actual sex. Society is sold on airbrushed version. We began talking about erotic capitalism, but we're, ta we're caught in capital as money. So what are the other values of eroticism, erotic performance that are about value, but not in terms of money in the bank? In one minute, I'm gonna pause us just to um, Clear out who is ventriloquized. Put a new ventriloquized just to kind of stir the pot a little bit without changing our subject. Please redefine erotic capital, Kristen. Let's talk about what we would do when, when, if we are in charge. No, uh, let us talk about what we would do if we were in charge, when we're in charge. Mm 
Once again, please elaborate. Who's the we? And in charge of what? But Kristen, please respond to my question about the product. What I mean when I say erotic capital is that women are expected to behave or perform in a certain way. Um, and that way has been brought on them by a patriarchal society. And it's something that I worry about um, for young, young women today, um, even my own daughter. And um, I'm not talking about educated people. The, the educated people in this room, I'm not talking about them. I'm worried about Someone who is more, more boisterous, loud, and assertive is more productive versus somebody that is more quiet, reserved, and <laughs> In response to the mother daughter issue. We learn so much from our mother's way to act as a woman. And the way to conduct yourself is passed down in friendships and it's really important to have a positive image in the way For instance, I don't let my friends tell me they hate their bodies. That's something like a cultural thing that women do with each other. They share their hatred and it's almost unexpected. 
It's a cultural thing women do with each other. They share their hatred, and it's almost expected. And if she is worried about her daughter, the best thing she can do is change her own perceptive perception of herself and make sure she shows that to her daughter. And watch, wait, or watch her daughter's friends like a hawk and influences them like she does her daughter. similar with the stripping and art where my artistic practice is that the hardest part the hardest part for me is not the doing but the solicitation so before the act can be done first first you have to get someone to want you to do it. And that's the most humiliating part in both cases for me. In regards to what Kristen said about the erotic capital, What she's saying is that there are expectations about the way that girls build their image every day. Like makeup, hair, clothes, the way they talk, the way they act in school. I'm curious if there are also expectations like that for the boys, sexual ones, or or something around that personality. It will continue to be the fall of 50% of the planet because we continue to see beauty through the masculine eye. I see beauty and I am not masculine. <laughs> or a male. <laughs> I'm not male. And I know men who see beauty who, that is not stereotypically beautiful. Um, I would like to go back to the idea that it's not that it's solicitation. In terms of acceptable kind of sexuality or femininity. In terms of performing. Um, an acceptable kind of sexual of sexuality for femininity. Does that help sell your art? Does that help sell your art? Maybe it's chemical and what I mean by that is there's the release of a chemical inside of us. Inside of us. Dopamine. Dopamine. I don't know. A high. A high. The high that we get from the success of a solicitation and things that surround that. I would like to try and go deeper and find out. where the fear comes from. And what can be the creative way to shake things and, and wake everybody up? 
If we make art as women, are we expected to use our sexuality whereas men aren't? Can you repeat what you said one more time? Yes. If we make art as women, are we expected to use our sexuality, uh, whereas men are not expected to use their sexuality? No. Like at some point. That's not true. Yes and yes. But if we assume that men don't have to perform sexuality and that aren't we buying into the same framework framework that the patriarchy gives us? And assuming that women are the only ones that are subjected and defining women in a limited way. I wonder if it's relevant that I felt shaken when somebody uh, mentioned my outfit. I wonder if it's more relevant that I wore it, uh, whether the new people I met here uh, would take me seriously as an artist uh, more than these shorts. I think the shorts are really normal. I would have never even noticed that they were short. I agree. <laughs> I agree. One minute. I think that's a good topic to bring up. Because... Someone didn't say that until after she made a statement about sexualizing herself at a cookie store and... As... As if as if it were discrediting her, which people do with rape. And that comment that her shorts were too short was totally absurd and the most hetero comment. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Isn't that the situation all the time with which artists have to struggle, like short shorts or art itself? But at the same time, in the defense of the person who made the comment, they were potentially addressing a behavior of dress. It might not have been malicious. All right. Um, let's clear the center. Um, I, I'm going to propose like a general kind of uh, angle for the next topic. And I'd like uh, someone or, some, or a couple of people to um, kind of direct it. Um, one thing I think is really important at, the, um, at DPAP is basically this idea of internationalism, where the fact that um, there, you know, people have come in from other parts of the world, a number of those people are here tonight. Um, we've got Peru, we've got Israel, we've got Mexico, and then who else is here from internationally? Um, I think a lot of the issues of labor that are being kind of discussed in the art world today are issues that um, talk about the kind of different labor contexts in different um, parts of the world. And so basically I'm interested in this idea of Americanism or this kind of um, 
already the way that in this debate, this idea of what it is the, the American perspective and this kind of like American issue has already come up. So in some way to consider or to find a topic that um, addresses the issue of labor in terms of uh, within the United States and um, internationalism or outside of the United States. And um, this kind of like, we already have here at BPAP this connection between uh, Berlin and Brooklyn and these people who are come up from Berlin who unfortunately left tonight, so we're not here for this One part. Is What's that? One is to leave. Oh, all right. Yes. Israel slash Berlin. Israel. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, so, um, if anyone wants to articulate that in a more meaningful way, because I'm uh, so muddled by this idea of uh, policing this, um, go for it. But we'll take like two minutes to kind of clear completely to the edges completely. On this next debate, I would like only two ventriloquies. Only two.